Hi guys, Asmo here and today I'm gonna answer the question that I keep getting all the time which is Asmo, how do I stop dying in maps? I'm playing this build or I'm playing the other build and I keep dying in maps, how do I stop dying? I have armor and things, why do I die? You know, I think I'm okay, I have some spell suppression, why do I die? You know, and people keep asking me that all the time. So today I'm gonna go over all the layers of defense that I have on my character, which is gonna help you understand how to make your character tanky, whether you're playing the same build or a different one, this should be helpful for you. So first of all, let's go through the things that you make on your character, that you can change on your character that are kind of passive, and then let's go also through some active things related to how you're playing the game that might also contribute to the amount of times you're dying so i'm currently level 95 got a bunch of xp uh, getting close to level 96 if we look at my deaths i died uh, three times right one plus one plus one that's three times uh, of course kidding i died 111 times but for softcore that is actually not much uh, for level 95 that's actually not much at all i've uh, looked at some streamers uh, who are uh, playing their league starters and on their league starter they have like hundreds of deaths and that is normal that is totally normal so don't be discouraged if you're dying a lot it's just it just means that you 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 need to change a little bit how you prioritize things if you want to die less that's that's simply what it is right so the first thing is the armor slash evasion so my character is purely armor based I wanted to uh, quickly get a high amount of base armor so that I can benefit from the Molten Shell. Funny enough, Val Molten Shell was actually buffed until the most recent patch. Uh, and, and when they patched it, they made it so that it works correctly now. But before that, it was basically removed in one hit. So you pop Val Molten Shell, a, a monster like you know spits at you and the val molten shell is gone so basically like more than 10k of absorption can be can be gone from you right so uh, if you look at the defense tab if i pop my all my flasks which i just spam all of the flasks and i got like 33k armor and then val molten shell will be like around 10k or something right so like 7 to 10k is usually my uh, molten shell when it pops and that is a very high amount of absorption allows me to tank some uh, burst damage allows me to just sit in packs of mobs uh, if whether it's like harbinger with beyond and all kinds of other stuff and just not die so that's one of the layers the armor right armor especially helps when you're fighting a lot of monsters that don't hit too hard but there is just like a lot of hits coming your way right evasion also helps against that it's very very good against that so it's good to have both evasion and armor and in high, higher investment version of this character i would ditch the iron reflexes and i would go for armor and evasion right if i can have like 30k armor while also having evasion that would be ideal right so that's one way to do this so make sure that you are looking at your basis quality all of your bases make sure that you get as much armor or evasion as you can so you can see like if, if you can get like some extra evasion rolls like here i have this crafted evasion rating on the prefix just to have higher evasion uh, we've got increased evasion rating here evasion here um, here we don't have any rolls on this but make sure you quality everything right so that's one thing that is gonna help you a lot so either uh, evasion or armor and then if you're using armor uh, molten shell that's why i went for armor because right? molten shell is so powerful uh, cast one damage taken uh, with molten shell here is set up with increased duration as well and that's why this withering step is linked that's another question people have been asking me so much this withering step doesn't work with cast one damage taken yeah it's not supposed to you're supposed to use it when you need it and it's simply here for the duration right so that you're uh, withered instead of lasting three seconds it lasts five and a half seconds, right? Which is much better. So uh, that's why this is linked here. Uh, now, next aspect is block, for example, right? A block or any kind of avoidance, it's really good to have some kind of avoidance, right? So I currently, when I pop my uh, flask, I have how much? Uh, 57 attack block, 4% uh, spell block, which is pretty much nothing. But we've got that 50 something, like above 50% attack block, which is definitely noticeable, right? So that is going to be basically damage that is being blocked and I'm not constantly taking hits right so this is something really important that's another layer of defense that's the avoidance right so generally there are three basic types of uh, defense mitigation avoidance and recovery right so we went over some mitigation and this is avoidance and then recovery is like your region flask uh, leech and stuff like that
next we have spell suppression. So spell suppression helps a lot against big slams that are spells like I think some uh, delirium effects against bosses and a lot of different things uh, like against sp specific like rares against um, essences I think as well. Uh, so spell suppression is really important to cap it at 100% and I also like going for this node uh, Inveterate. Uh, which is uh, adding 3% to the amount of uh, spell damage suppressed and then picking two extra, right? Some uh, suppressing 55% of spell damage, only taking 45% of spell damage, right? So that's another big layer of defense that helps me against the spells. Then we've got Endurance Charges, right? So Endurance Charges, I generate them through anointment of the aggressive Bastion. This gives me extra chance to block. 10% chance to gain endurance charge on kill. So I have three endurance charges as soon as I start mapping and kill a few mobs, right? Kill a pack and max endurance charges for the rest of the map pretty much. Uh, it's very, very helpful. Gives you extra res that allows you to overcap for like certain curses, right? So if monsters are reducing your resistances, this allows you to overcap it a little bit. So that's very helpful. Gives you extra uh, physical damage reduction, which is always really, really nice. The next layer of defense, max res. Max res is actually very easy to get this league. You can have, let me show you, where do I have this? For example, on my chest, I have plus one to maximum lightning res. On my boots, I have plus one to maximum fire res. You can uh, take a look at these mods from uh, these new currencies, right? From the influence currencies. And these acres and embers are able to grant you plus one to max res. Uh, if you're playing a build with a shield, you can also get something like plus two to all max all maximum resistances. It's insane roll. And I'm probably gonna get a shield later that has that on it as well. And then another way to uh, get a max res is uh, by going for uh, divine flesh, right? So divine flesh, it's, it comes from uh, this timeless jewel called Glorious Vanity. It needs to say blah, blah, blah in the name of Zibakwa. And that will give you a divine flesh on a nearest notable, right? So this notable basically makes it that 50% of the elemental damage that I take is taken as chaos damage. And I also get plus five to max chaos res. So I get this max chaos res. I also get, uh, there is also max chaos res in here. There is also max chaos res that I'm getting from this small notable that I'm gonna get another one of. And then there is also the shield that can give you a plus three to max chaos res and also can give you plus two to max all res, which counts chaos as well. So you can get to 90%. You can easily get to 90% chaos resistance. Um, if you have 90% chaos resistance and only 75% of the elemental ones, that means your effective elemental resistance is going to be 82 and a half, right? So I'm right now at like 81, 82% elemental resistances, which is amazing. It's much higher because the higher you get it, the closer to 90, the more benefit for each percentile you're getting, right? Because you're reducing, like you can think about it this way. If I'm taking a hundred damage hit, right? If I'm taking a hundred damage hit, I have zero resistances and then I get 1% resistance. I'm going to take 99, right? So I am reducing the damage by 1% by getting 1%. But if I am at, let's say, 80%, right, and I get to 81, then I am reducing the damage by 5%. It's five times as effective as it was in the beginning, right? Because out of the 20 damage that I was taking, I'm removing one, right? So one out of 20, that's 5%, right? So that's why the higher you get your resistances, the stronger each point of the increase uh, is getting, right? That is very, very important concept to understand and why max resistances are very, very powerful. So that's another way you can make your character tankier. And of course, Chaos Res, needless to say is very important right because a lot of monsters do chaos damage and you're gonna have spikes of chaos damage or degens of chaos damage that are simply just gonna one shot you and you're gonna be like what the fuck just killed me and then there happened to be some kind of monster like some kind of zombie that does chaos damage or some kind of monster that had extra chaos damage right and you're not gonna know that because you're gonna die monster is gonna disappear and then you're gonna be wondering why you died but like chaos resistance is another thing that uh, a lot of people neglect like uh, if you don't have uh, chaos res on your gear you can also get a flask like amethyst flask is very very useful to uh, use uh what else life pool of course that's a very basic thing uh, of course you want to get like if you're playing soft core ideally you want to like 5k right so if i grab one more notable i would be at 5k life 
And that's what I'm gonna get when I get like next level, right? So I hit 96 and I'm gonna have like 5k life. And that's totally enough for softcore because the life pool is only as good as your mitigation is, right? So your mitigation and your avoidance and your recovery are very, very important. The life pool itself is something that people just look at and when they're like new players and like, oh, this build has 7k life, must be so tanky. Or this build has 4k life. Like I can make a build that is gonna have 3k life, that is gonna be much tankier than some new player who just stacks life and has 8k life, right? I can make a build that has 3k life and is much tankier because I am going to be mitigating an insane amount of damage. So it's gonna be like multiplying the effective HP that I have, right? So that's an important concept to understand. Life pool is not everything, but of course, add more of it if you're dying. That's like, that's one of the simplest way. Just get better rolls, get jewels with life, uh, catalyze your jewelry for life and stuff like that, right? That's another way to increase the life. What else do we have? We've got the VMS, which I already talked about. Um, and then we've got the things that are basically your playstyle, right? Something related to how you are actually playing the game. So the way you're playing the game will really determine a lot here because you need to keep your flasks up, right? Flask uptime is super important. So if you can keep your flasks up all of the time, uh, you're gonna have much higher defense than if you don't. So a lot of the time when people die, when you look at clips of streamers dying, for example, their flasks just run out and there's this little couple seconds between they pop to the next uh, charges of their flasks and they get hit at, that, at the same time by something and they would have survived if they had the flasks up, but they don't, so they die. Happens all the time. Uh, keep your flasks up as much as you can, try to be efficient with them, use the use the orbs, uh, instilling orbs to like set up some conditions for them if it makes it easier for you uh, and try to keep them up as much as you can and also roll them properly, right? Roll something good on them, get quality on them, like make sure you're getting good quality on your flasks. That's really important. This is one of the first things you should be doing when you enter maps is making sure that your flasks are good. So get them to 20 quality, uh, get them with some decent rolls, like reduced effect of curses is very nice early on. It doesn't stack, by the way, apparently you can only have one of them, so I need to change this to something else. Um, get something like uh, removing ignite, removing bleed, and of course, life flask, right? Life flask, especially for this build, is super important because it's not only your uh, survivability, but also your damage, right? So I definitely recommend going out of your way to get the high tier life flask, get a T1, a saturated mod, right? So up to 70% increased amount recovered, get immunity to bleeding on it, and get 28% quality, which you get from Haylock in Research T4, right? In Betrayal. So this is something super important and using your flask in time is gonna determine whether you die or not a lot of the time. Because we have a lot of mitigation, I have endurance charges, I have all these resistances and all that stuff. That means when I get hit, when I get fucking 20 stacks of corrupted blood and stuff hitting me, I still have time to react. I have like a couple of seconds to press my flask. If I don't notice my health going down, I just die, right? My character will just die because my main recovery is the life flask. So I need to pay attention to my life. When it starts going down, I hit my life flask. I'm gonna have it up all the time because I have nodes such as this, the field medicine that gives me charges. I have these nodes, I'm playing a pathfinder. So I'm getting charges all the time to make sure that I always have this flask when I need and it's pretty much always up when I need. So I use this, I use this, and also my other flasks, like my defensive flasks get used if I'm if they're not up, if I'm using my life flask. So that's the setup that I have and you really need to make sure that you're paying attention to that. If you had a couple seconds to react, to play, press a life flask and you didn't and you died, that is entirely your fault. You still have to play your character. You still have to play the game, right? Um, another layer of defense. Let's talk about the favorite layer of defense of a lot of people, which is damage. The more damage you have, the less damage you're gonna take because you're gonna kill things faster. A lot of the time, a lot of the time where people die is when they jump in the middle of the pack of monsters. The pack of monsters is tankier than they expected and just they get they get ganged on and just destroyed and, and they're like, why did I die, right? Well, you died because you didn't kill the monsters in time, right? You needed to throw the projectiles into that pack before you run into it or something. This is a little bit of a delayed damage build because it's poison. So uh, the monsters are gonna take a little bit of time before they die. So you need to make sure that you take that into account, right? Uh, that's another thing. Another thing is mobility. Make sure you have your flame dash charges to get out of sticky situations, right? Make sure you're not 
uh, you're not just sitting there and taking the damage like move around if this is if Gwenon is a monster here you want to move around like let's say this is a boss right this is this is what i do on a boss right this is what i do on a boss i just run around run around run around run around right make sure you're not getting hit and if it's there's like a big pack of scary monsters you can do the same thing just run just keep your character mobile it's gonna mitigate tons of damage the ai in this game is super super simple and all the time it's just not gonna hit you with anything if you keep doing that so that is another important thing and then maybe last thing that i want to talk about is map modes right so map modes are something super important that a lot of people are neglecting so let me grab like a map let me roll a city square map okay so this is something that a lot of people are neglect neglecting because they listen to let's say my build guide and i say i like this character as a league starter because it can run all map modes right and i say that and that's true the character can run all map modes if you have a map that is corrupted and rare and unidentified and you need it for your completion you can totally just run it no problem right you will be able to complete it because this character can run any map modes it doesn't mean you won't die at all if there are crazy mods on it right just because you can run all map mods doesn't mean you should run all map mods right because certain map mods will definitely kill you no matter how tanky your character is right so Let's make sure that we roll this. So the usual way to roll it is you use Orbs of Binding or Orb Orbs of Alchemy and you check what it is, right? This is super uh, easy, actually. This is just one damage mod, right? It has two rogue exiles, players can deflect exposure and just 100% uh, extra fist damage as fire. This is fine. This is totally fine. One damage mod is okay. I would be just totally happy running maps like this. Let's grab something else. Let's see what's something else. Okay, more rare monsters, um, crit and less armor less chance to block this is not that scary right this is not that scary crit is usually not that scary and if i wanted to i would pick this node here and i would make myself crit immune for the uh, enemies that i poisoned right but what i'm talking about is when mods align right so if we have something like this this is this will this will be very scary for certain players monsters fire two additional projectiles uh, all monster damage from hits always ignites most people don't have uh, ignite immunity and they will be like which of my flasks is there moving ignite it's for me it's the mana flask right so i keep spamming it all the time so and then you have no regen so you get ignited with no regen uh, you don't have flask charges because it's reduced flask charges and you keep getting hit by hit by multiple projectiles lesser multi like lmp like two additional projectiles it's potentially three times the damage right you're going to be receiving three times as many projectile hits because the monsters that would normally not hit you are going to be hitting you and especially the tentacle miscreations the uh, the ones in the blue influence maps they get all of these projectiles that fire in like a barrage so they will all be hitting you all of these projectiles will be hitting you and then you're gonna pick an altar that uh, says oh get extra scarabs but monsters fire two extra projectiles and then you have them doing literally five times the damage and igniting you right and then you're like why did i die well because you rolled five times more damage on the map right and you can get even crazier stuff in here right you can get such crazy things like imagine if you also had like um if you also had something like you're affected by vulnerability or something right which is a very scary curse right so these map modes are something that you definitely need to pay attention to if you want to be leveling and not dying right doesn't mean you need to be a pussy and reroll every single map until you get like nothing on it right but just make sure you don't have like i actually can't roll a hard map for the life of me like every single map i roll is totally fine like oh like minus max 100% extra damage. Okay, this is two damage mods, right? So this is two damage mods. If this was like cursed by, by vulnerability or cursed by frostbite or something, that would be crazy, right? Because I'd be like minus max res and then also reduced resistances and then also extra damage as elementals. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, and then also add LMP to that and you have a map where you just walk in and you die and you're like, what did I just do? 
So this is something that you want to look for. Hopefully this will help you guys stop dying so much and uh, being able to level and get to some decent levels because the higher level you are, also the more life you get, the more passive points that you can spend on more tankiness and then you die less as a result of that, right? So it's really helpful to level up and suck it up for a, for a few levels, just run a little bit easier maps and then make sure you're just not dying. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.